Hey YouTube! Today I'm going to show you how to make a 3D printed skull. Ta da! That looks like this from an MRI. That's what makes this so different. DICOM is the file extension name of an MRI scan. And an MRI is a series of scans that run through your head. Uh, at the hospital or usually an x-ray imaging kind of center and it gets collects all the data as the scan goes through from your brain cells to your tissues to your innermost thoughts and desires <laughs> not your innermost thoughts and desires but you get what I mean so this was made from DICOM data it's actually unreadable because it looks like individual JPEG or PNG files I had to convert the DICOM data into a 3D mesh if you want to download 3D slicer or inverse alias it reads the files smashes them up together to form one giant 3D printed skull. Oh, and from a 3D mesh, I had to clean up the mesh, separate the parts that I wanted, like the brain. Use any 3D software to clean it up, like Maya, Rhino, even simple ones like Mesh Mixer. I used Mesh Mixer because it was really simple and it did what it needed to do. Made them into clean files, send them to a printer, or use the 3D printer, you know, like MakerBot or the Fortis, and then um, and then you get this, and it's pretty clean. Usually comes out like that where you have all the infill and the support still there, but you just have to remove it out and it's pretty simple. So I'm actually going to teach you how to do this step by step. So if we head on over to the computer screen. So the first action we need to do is to render and export the DICOM files into a 3D mesh. So open up 3D Slicer and at the top left hand corner you can see DCIM. That stands for DICOM. And you just select the folder with all your DICOM files to load selection to Slicer. Then to click Editor, click Apply. And once you've clicked Apply, you need to look for the icon associated with Threshold. And scroll down. Uh, and now you can play with the Threshold range. I found a Threshold range of about 150 allowed me to select most of what I wanted from the skull, including the brain. Uh, and different parts of the other tissue available and then you click apply and you can also rename your model name from tissue you can name it skull or whatever you want if you're doing multiple exports of different DICOM folders clicking the display ROI does not do anything but if you click the top left hand corner volume you can start to see the area of the MRI scan that you've selected. Now you can select uh, however much of the mesh that you've exported. Well it's not actually a mesh yet until you save it as an STL or OBJ. But you can play around with this. Uh, you can also check out different functions in 3D Slicer. They allow you to do things like change the, the volume view. Um, so you have different settings for different kinds of scans. You can do it like an x-ray or an MRI. Uh, and once you're happy, save the mesh into an SDL or an OBJ file type. This will be the file type that you will be working with in a program like Mesh Mixer, Rhino, Maya, any 3D software uh, that can allow you to make edits. And voila, there you have it. So for the second step, we want to isolate the brain out from the DICOM data. So again in 3D Slicer, uh, we want to look for a plugin called Skull Stripper. It's under the, the field called Segmentation. So again, Skull Stripper under Segmentation, you can find this on Google. Just search Skull Stripper plugin 3D Slicer and you'll be able to find it. Uh, and once you've loaded that, the input volume should be the volume that you already have. Create a new model on the output brain surface and create a new volume under brain mask. Uh, under iterations, now you can't drag it all the way to the end. So drag it to as far as you can. It's probably in like the 90,000 regions. And subdivisions, you want to max it out to 20. And then you click apply and it will run forever and ever. But once you're done, you will have a brain model. So the third step we want to do is to divide the skull using the plane cut tool that's under edit 
in Mesh Mixer, and so the plane cut tool allows us to um, change the axis and find the exact point uh, where we want to cut the mesh. You can make this perpendicular to the skull, and once you're happy with the angle you're going to cut it at, click accept, and you've done it. You've cut the mesh in half. The fourth part in this process is cleaning up the insides of the skull. So I selected the outer layer and made an inverse selection that's under select and I went to modify and I clicked invert and so what that, that did was it selected everything inside of the skull and by hitting delete or backspace whatever it is on your keyboard click delete and all the insides go away and so now all I have to do is clean up the remaining parts just by selecting them slowly bit by bit and being careful that I don't select the outer regions while doing so. Now comes the tricky part, filling up the skull halves using the Make Solid tool. So this is kind of tricky. Once you've cleaned out the inside of the skull, you kind of have a huge hollow cavity and I don't want that because my brain has no way to sit. So um, I need to be very careful when using this Make Solid tool now if I zoom in very carefully, I'll show you how I need to do that. I need to clean out all these tiny little bits here. Uh, and I need to get rid of as much of them as I can. Because once I click Make Solid, the program is just going to fill up the entire thing according to where two points in the solid meet. So if there's like a tiny little bit right in the center, it's going to make this weird shape and dent. So, see, even now that I've done it, I can still see there are certain bits and it isn't completely flat. And that's because the inside of the cavity that I had just now wasn't as clean as it could have been. Uh, so, well, once you've cleaned up most of it and you're happy, you want to max out the solid accuracy and the mesh density. Click Update to get it as flat as possible. And once it's at a level that you're most happy with, you click Accept again. And if you go over to the Object Browser, you can then see the different layers inside. Um, this took the longest because, see, when I did this, I could see lots of crap inside. So I had to go back again and clean it out once more so I could fill it up and make a really good solid. And of course, save your file. The sixth step in this process is making a brain cavity using the Boolean difference tool. So remember the brain that we took out uh, earlier, one of the earlier steps in this process? Um, you import that into this file and you can place that right where the skull is so you can see it sits pretty well. Um, you want to go over to units and dimensions in Mesh Mixer just to make sure that all the size is right. Keep in mind that I'm actually going to make a cavity and then I'm going to shrink the brain that I print eventually smaller than that, about by 10% smaller, so that it can actually sit inside. If I made it the exact same size, it would never fit. Um, yeah, and the other thing you want to watch out for is you would probably want to do this to both halves at the same time so that you can get the brain at the exact same point, or else it's going to be hanging in a weird place and the, the skulls wouldn't be able to close. So how I did this was I imported the other half in and using the transform and duplicate tool I um, I made a copy of the brain I know it looks pretty cool I made a copy of the brain for both halves and I then worked on aligning them such that it was just at the right point uh, this was all done by estimation so I don't have any really good tips for you except you might want to check with a medical student who can help you with this alignment and stuff. Um, and so you probably want to get it as flushed as possible and keep in mind that you you want the skull to close. All right? And because you're shrinking the brain, you have some kind of leeway if you make it about 10% smaller. Um, yeah, so save, save this again. And so there, so that's what Boolean difference does. You put the brain uh, over the skull cavity, you select Boolean difference and you click accept and the brain goes away and it basically that that mold is 
cut out of the skull cavity and you now have an imprint of the brain in the skull cavity that's filled and you just save that and you're pretty much done with the skull materials now uh, I have three different materials here I have the orange which is pretty translucent I have this red which is quite it's it's hollow um, but I wanted it to be a bit more see-through. You can't see that much through it. Oh well. And I have a skull, which was supposed to be as translucent as possible. I've been told that you can get more translucent than this, but uh, this was the best that I got so far. Another color that I can think of is blue, but you know, as you can see, some colors come out really opaque, whereas some colors come out really transparent. So it really depends on the kind of print that you want and where you want to take it. Thanks for watching. Uh, there's no need to subscribe because I'm probably not going to make another tutorial video anytime soon. Um, but I hope this was helpful. I hope you can all make your own 3D meshes and your own brains and your own skulls. My name has been Mike. My name is Michael. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope this video was helpful.